The III Initiative is a showcase for and by indie developers. Think of it like the Nintendo Direct or the Summer Games Fest or the Game Awards. Lots of new game announcements, lots of DLC announcements, but all centered around indie games. Trailers on trailers on trailers. No BS celebrity cameos, no people on stage talking about games and such, and most importantly, no advertisements. It's everything a gamer could want in a game expo. Some of these are games that are already released, and some are brand new announcements. And today we're going to talk about each announcement, and we're going to talk about if they could even run on Steam Deck. But before that, if you like this video or any other video I make, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. Spreading the good gospel of high-tech low life lets the YouTube algorithm know that I'm doing well. But first, let's talk about the very first title, Slay the Spire 2. In the initial announcement, it didn't really show any gameplay. It was an animated trailer showing that Slay the Spire 2 does in fact exist. But of course, on the official Steam listing, it shows that Slay the Spire 2 looks very similar to Slay the Spire 1, even down to the graphics. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean Slay the Spire 2 is going to run the same as Slay the Spire 1. They rebuilt the game up in a brand new game engine, presumably Godot. They claim modern features all new visuals, and expanding mod ability. That's right, Slay the Spire 2 will have modding support. The game releases an early access in quote, 2025. For those bummed out about Slay the Spire 2 being an early access, just remember that the original Slay the Spire was an early access, and it turned out to be an excellent title. Risk of Rain 2 is getting a new major update. This is an artifact update that includes a new skin for the mercenary character. It's the guy from Dead Cells. Anyways, this is the head of their new expansion pack, and this is free as well. Last time I played Risk of Rain 2 on Steam Deck, it ran really well, and you can also mod the game too. But yeah, Risk of Rain 2 is pretty sick, you should try it out, and it works great on Steam Deck. Kill Knight is a top-down isometric bullet hell shooter, featuring both melee and guns. It looks real fun. I want to play this. That said, it looks like there's going to be a lot of enemies, so while yes, I do think it'll run well on Steam Deck most of the time, when the game really gets going, you know, with the bullets and the enemies, I think the game is going to lag quite a bit. I could be wrong though, it could be well optimized, but we'll see. Regardless though, I think this will be an interesting pick for the Steam Deck. Or at the very least, I'll try to pick it up and play it on the Steam Deck. This game releases sometime in 2024. Shadows of Doubt is a sort of private detective immersive sim. Shadows of Doubt is actually pretty fun. You do all the hard work of investigating as a private investigator. Putting the clues together, finding the evidence, and avoiding some nasty people. The new sharpshooter update is out now, and the game works pretty well on Steam Deck. And yes, you can buy the game right now if you're interested. My Time at Sandrock is an interesting game. Yes, it's a cozy game, and I'm on record saying that cozy games kind of suck, but this one looks more interesting. And this trailer is specifically for crossplay. The game is already out, but crossplay is coming pretty soon, so if you have any friends that own this game on console, then you can play it with them. I haven't tried this game out on Steam Deck myself, but from what I've seen, it seems like it runs pretty well, though I can imagine it getting kind of laggy when automation is involved. Dino Lords has you take the role as a Lord of England. You build your castle, you fortify it with soldiers, you have personnel, all of this to defend against the Danes and the dinosaurs. That's right, the setting is a mixture of realistic Middle Ages and dinosaurs, which I'm surprised no one's actually done before, unless I just haven't seen it. Like most RTSs, I don't really think this is a great fit for the Steam Deck. RTSs are notoriously CPU dependent, and the Steam Deck CPU really isn't that great. But I also have another question too. How come I'm not on the side riding the dinosaurs, you know? What's the point of being able to control my character in real time, like an action game, if I can't control any dinosaurs, huh? Anyways, the game releases in early access whenever it does. There's no official release date. Gestalt Steam and Cinder is a game that I'm not sure if I've covered necessarily, but I have definitely tried out the demo during the Steam Next Fest, and honestly, this looks pretty good. It's a Metroidvania, the demo ran great on Steam Deck, and now there's an official release date. May the 21st, 2024. I do kind of like the western meets steampunk aesthetic this game is going for, and honestly, I'm excited to try it out. Vampire Survivors literally needs no introduction. It's one of the most played Steam games for a reason, because it runs great, except for when it gets really laggy towards the end of a run. The game's dirt cheap, buy it now, play it now. But anyways, that's besides the point. This trailer is for a PS5 announcement, which is cool, but you know what's even cooler? They managed to make a collaboration DLC with Konami, and guess what the franchise is? 
It's Contra. These guys got a literal collaboration with Konami, and instead of doing the obvious, they decided to do a crossover with Contra. A literal stroke of genius. Anyways, the game's out now. The game runs pretty well on Steam Deck, except for towards the end of a run, a especially crazy run, and, you know, just play it, okay? So they did a pretty lengthy developer interview for a game called Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn. And it looks like a pretty interesting game. It's an action RPG. Though, that said, I don't know if this will necessarily run well on Steam Deck. I feel like it looks a little too graphically demanding to do so. I just want to see, I think it's crazy that any developers now have the ability to make games that look graphically good. Like, I don't want to say super photorealistic, but it does look quite good. Maybe a little too good to run well on Steam Deck, but... I mean, I don't own the game, nor am I the game developer, so there's no way of knowing for certain. The only way to know for certain is to try the game out myself, and the game looks pretty sick. This game should be out sometime during the summer of this year. Admittedly, I've never played the original Never Alone. The original game never really spoke to me, and honestly, this game doesn't really speak to me either. Will this game run on Steam Deck though? I'm not entirely certain. I'd like to think that maybe this has a chance of running pretty well on Steam Deck, but it's hard to know for certain. Cataclysmo is self-described as a mix of RTS and tower defense, and honestly, it looks kind of crazy. You build your base block by block, you maintain the settlement, and you survive the night. Honestly, if I had to guess, this game probably will not run well on Steam Deck, especially when there's hordes of monsters coming at you. Like I said, RTSs are notoriously CPU dependent, and the Steam Deck CPU probably won't cut it for this game. I mean, just look at all of those monsters, seriously. But again, I'm not the game developer, so maybe they'll prove me wrong. In fact, I'd love for them to prove me wrong. This game releases on July the 16th, 2024. I'll probably play this one on my PC. Death Must Die is kind of like Vampire Survivors, but the metagame progression is instead replaced by gearing yourself and getting skill trees. This game is actually gearing up for Act 2. That's right, the Act 2 update is coming out pretty soon. The game's already out in early access if you want to play it now. I've played this on my Steam Deck and it runs quite well. End Zone 2 is a post-apocalyptic colony builder. Admittedly, I'm not too big on these sorts of games, but this one does look quite interesting because, you know, it's a post-apocalyptic one. Having to survive what I assume is some sort of nuclear fallout, but I'm not entirely sure. Like with some of the other RTSs I've seen in this showcase, I do have my concerns as to whether or not this will run well on Steam Deck, because of course CPU limitations. But I would love for these developers to pleasantly prove me wrong. I mean, I don't want to be right about this, but I'm just kind of cynical. But even then, you can always just play this game on your PC and stream it from your PC to your Steam Deck. I know I've done that more than a couple of times. The game is said to be released sometime in quarter 3 of 2024. The Dyson Sphere program is a game you can buy today, and it's a crazy, like, simulator of planets and stuff. The Steam Deck supposedly runs this game at a pretty respectable frame rate, but it chews up power like crazy. That said, I haven't played this game and I don't know what kind of update this is, but this is supposed to be some kind of update, I think. I don't know. You can buy the game today though, the game is already out. Undermine 2 is a full-on sequel to Undermine 1, and I've honestly never played the original. From what I can gather, the original runs pretty well on Steam Deck, and so I would imagine the sequel runs pretty well as well, but it's hard to know for certain. I will say, the game looks kind of fun, and the original game is 50% off if you're in. It also apparently has full workshop support as well. Unfortunately, Undermine 2 has no official release date, but you can wishlist it on their Steam page right now, so you can be reminded of when the game actually releases. Norland is a sort of medieval kingdom simulator. These sorts of games always have me question whether or not it'll run well on Steam Deck, given that there's a lot of stuff going on. These games always tend to be CPU bound, and so we don't know if this game will run well on Steam Deck. I'd certainly like it to though. The game releases on May 16th, 2024. What the Car is a totally realistic car simulator. Watch out Forza, watch out Gran Turismo. You guys have a new challenge on the horizon. You take control of multiple different biblically accurate cars, and you can even make your own levels and share them with your friends. But will this game run on Steam Deck? I have no reason to believe that it won't. At the very least, I think it'll run better than any of the Forza games. This game is slated for release on September the 5th, 2024. Darkest Dungeon 2 is a game that's already out and it runs really well on Steam Deck already. 
This trailer however showcases the new Kingdoms game mode, which is coming in a free update. If you want to pick up the game, the game is on sale right now for 33% off on Steam. That said, is it a good time to say that I've never actually played Darkest Dungeons 1 or 2? I wonder if I should pick up either of them. Now this one's a totally new game. The game is called Rakugaki, or RKGK for short. It's very reminiscent of something like Jet Set Radio, but this time it's an actual 3D action platformer instead. This trailer has no actual gameplay, but there are screenshots you can see on the official Steam page. The game is slated for release in quarter 2 of 2024, which is very soon. But will it run on Steam Deck? I think it might run on Steam Deck, and has a pretty decent chance of doing so. Broken Roads is a CRPG that was shadow dropped on the day of this expo. It's very much a classic CRPG experience. It takes place in a post-apocalyptic Australia, but not one like Mad Max. Seeing as this game just released, there isn't too much footage of this game running on Steam Deck to begin with, but from what I've seen, it runs fairly well. That said, according to the negative reviews, the game is in a bit of a rough state. Hopefully the developers will respond to community feedback. But yes, the game is available now. You can buy it today. Raven's Watch is a top-down action roguelike that recently went into early access on April the 6th. From what I've read, the game runs pretty well on Steam Deck, and the developers recently implemented some Steam Deck fixes. So yes, the developers are definitely paying attention to Steam Deck usage. The game is also co-op as well. We won't know when the game is going to be out of early access, but for right now, you can buy and play the game today. Like with most early access titles, you're bound to come across some bugs. So if you do so, please report it to the developers. Honestly, I didn't even know there were three of these games. This is Cat Quest 3. You take the role of what I can only assume is a cat pirate, sailing the Caribbean seas. I've actually never played Cat Quest 1 or 2, but I have no reason to believe that this wouldn't run well on Steam Deck. But maybe I should pick up Cat Quest 1 and 2. Both games look kinda cute. Anyways, this game is supposed to release sometime this year, in 2024. Hyper Lightbreaker is, I'm not sure if it's a sequel or a prequel or whatever it is, but it's related to Hyper Light Drifter, which was a pretty awesome game. This however is somewhat different being a 3D action game. It's also co-op as well. I mean, I personally have no reason to believe that it won't run on Steam Deck, but it's hard to know for certain. But the biggest question of all is, where does this take place relative to Hyper Light Drifter, and can I play as the Drifter from Hyper Light Drifter? The game has no official release date. The last spell is a turn-based tactical RPG with tower defense mechanics. And this trailer is for the new DLC, Dwarves of Runenberg. Granted, I haven't played the base game itself, but from what I've seen, the base game runs pretty well on Steam Deck. As someone that enjoys tactical RPGs, it's kind of weird that I've never heard of this game. But hey, I guess it's never too late to play a video game, huh? Anyways, if you want to pick up the game, the game is available right now. Leisara Summit Kingdom is yet another kingdom building game but this time on a mountain. But unlike the other games, rather than focusing on building medieval style castles and kingdoms, you instead are building a village and kingdom more inspired by Nepalese and Tibetan cultures. It seems like not many people have tried this game on Steam Deck, but from what I've seen, the game seems to run okay on the Steam Deck, around the 40 to 45 FPS range. Given that this isn't like an action-oriented, reflex-heavy game, you could, you could probably play this game at 30 FPS, capped. The game actually shadow dropped on April the 10th, so if you are interested in this game, then you can buy it now. Wizard of Legend 2 is, yeah, a true sequel to Wizard of Legend 1. It's the one action roguelike that my brother swears by. Anyways, Wizard of Legend 1 was pretty fun. I played that on my Switch, and it was a good time. And for what I've seen, the original ran pretty well on Steam Deck. Will this one run well on Steam Deck? Well, I think it's a little more graphically demanding, but I think it'll still run pretty well. Unfortunately for you, there's no official release date. Let's School is presumably some sort of high school simulator in a vaguely Asian high school. These sorts of like simulator games, I think I've said it before, but these aren't necessarily my cup of tea either. The game runs pretty well on Steam Deck, though it doesn't run at a solid 60 FPS, but it doesn't really matter because it's not a reflex intense game. Anyways, this game is already out, so if you want to play it right now, you can on your Steam Deck. This trailer was primarily primarily for the console release of this game. Brotato is a top-down roguelike arena shooter, and honestly, it's pretty good. It also plays really well on Steam Deck, and a lot of people play this game on the Steam Deck, being one of the top played Steam Deck games. Anyways, this trailer's for the DLC and the couch co-op update. 
The T in Chia is silent by the way. This game recently released last month, and it looks like it runs pretty well on Steam Deck. There's no new content updates or anything, this is just an announcement trailer for the Switch release of this game. But of course, if you are interested in this game on the Switch, then it'll be out soon. But if you want to play the game now and you have a Steam Deck, then you can buy the game now. Is it a bad time to mention that I never played Streets of Rogue, the original? Anyways, this is Streets of Rogue 2, and it's supposed to be a sort of top-down immersive sim with a procedurally generated world. Honestly, it looks kind of crazy, and you know, the gameplay possibilities that they present to me in this trailer already look crazy to me. Anyways, the original Streets of Rogue ran pretty well on Steam Deck from what I understand. Now this doesn't necessarily guarantee that Streets of Rogue 2 will run well on Steam Deck, but I have no reason to believe that it won't. The big question now is, should I play the original Streets of Rogue first? Am I missing out? And this game releases sometime in 2024. Old World is a game you can buy today, and it seems to run pretty well on Steam Deck. And from what I've read, the game seems to perform pretty well on Steam Deck, and it seems like a great fit. Anyways, this trailer's for the new DLC. But if you want to play the base game today, you can buy it today. Power World runs okay on the Steam Deck. Definitely not at 60 FPS, but you could get away with 30 FPS. Anyways, this is a PvP update, but the game's already available if you want to play it today. Power World is pretty fun, y'all. 33 Immortals, as the name suggests, is a 33 player action co-op roguelike. I can't imagine the nightmare of doing a raid with 33 people, especially if 32 people in your party are incapable of following basic directions. Anyways, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this game is currently an epic exclusive. There's been no news as to whether or not this game will even come out on Steam. That said, there is a closed beta you can sign up for on their official website. But to be honest, there's no official release date, not even on Epic, and we don't know if this will come on Steam anytime soon. As for whether or not this game will run on Steam Deck, I mean, there's no reason to believe that this won't run on Steam Deck. I think the only issue though is that most people don't want to go through the hassle of installing the Epic Game Store on the Steam Deck, especially for this game. I think a lot of people are just going to wait till an official Steam release happens, if it does happen that is. Mouse is a boomer shooter with a very old cartoon aesthetic, more specifically an old Steamboat Willie aesthetic. Unlike a lot of the other Steamboat Willie inspired media that came after Mickey Mouse went public domain, I think Mouse has the potential to be an action good game. I have no reason to believe that this game won't run well on Steam Deck. The game releases sometime next year. V Rising's been in early access for quite a bit, but now update 1.0 is coming out very soon this year. And we saw a glimpse of that Castlevania DLC that was mentioned earlier. The Castlevania crossover itself is free, but you can buy a special outfit pack, which of course features an Alucard costume, which is great. V Rising, even in its early access stage, ran at a solid 30 FPS on the Steam Deck. I don't know if it'll run any better during its full release, but who knows for certain. Anyways, the game is coming out soon. But if you really want to play it now in its early access stage, you can buy it right now. But the full release comes out very soon, next month even. And last but certainly not least is a new Prince of Persia game being developed by the same guys that developed Dead Cells, Evil Empire. The rogue Prince of Persia is a roguelite, and given that these guys also developed Dead Cells, you can expect a great game with these guys. What is worth mentioning is that despite Ubisoft's seemingly anti-Steam crusade, this game is coming to Steam. And there's no mention of Ubisoft Connect anywhere on the official Steam page. The game enters early access next month, May the 14th, 2024. And remember, like with most early access games, if you encounter any bugs, you should report them to the developer. The Triple I Initiative. Was it a success? I would go so far as to say yes, there was an interesting variety of games. Yes, quite a few roguelikes, but, but there was also a mix of brand new games, games with new DLC and updates, and games that I've never heard of. This new showcase made a very strong first impression, and now hopefully they'll do one of these every single year. They set out to do everything they wanted to do. Trailers, with no advertisements, no fluff, all great stuff. That said, this is a very western focused indie showcase, so I think some love for eastern indie games would be appreciated, but overall this was a very, very good showcase. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos, and if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page, links in the description.